Good afternoon, everyone. I just uh, got finished listening uh, to the governor's presentation. I want to begin with a short statement, and then I'd be happy to answer your questions. The governor's proposed budget is complete, and it is balanced. His budget asks the legislature and the public to make some of the most difficult choices we have ever been asked to make. But as unappealing and painful as the governor's proposed budget is, the only thing worse is to allow this fiscal crisis to linger. Its continued domination of our energy, our time, and our attention prevents our state from focusing on the myriad of positive opportunities to create a 21st century education system, a high wage clean energy economy, and building strengths in our regions and local communities. I appreciate the seriousness with which the governor has developed his budget proposals, and I have committed to him that the Senate will begin reviewing his proposals immediately. The Senate is ready to get to work on solving this budget crisis now. In fact, I have asked Senator Leno, the chair of our budget committee, to convene a meeting of the Senate Budget and Fiscal Review Committee this Thursday to begin reviewing the governor's specific proposals. While our review this year may be truncated in terms of calendar days, it will be rigorous with a purposeful determination to develop serious solutions for serious times. And while the choices we face are difficult, our review will ensure that the budget we enact this year protects as much as possible for those in need, lays the groundwork for sustained economic growth, and preserves and expands job opportunities for Californians. Thank you. Glad to answer your questions. Well, I'm just, now, Because Governor Brown has put forward a comprehensive framework, and that's different from what Governor Schwarzenegger put forward. In addition, uh, I am most pleased about the fact that the governor is proposing something that I know I have been a little bit out in the wilderness touting for a long time, namely the restructuring of state and local government, bringing services closer to the people, and most importantly, making sure that if you have the responsibility to provide the services, you have the money to do so. And if you're not providing the services, you ought not to be collecting the money, align resources and responsibilities. So that's very different. He, it's a comprehensive approach. The cuts are terrible. And we will review them carefully, but overall, I must say that um, the governor's instinct is correct to do everything that we can to put this fiscal crisis behind us as soon as possible. Right. Yes. I mean, I think it, there's a, a recognition in this proposal that we have run out of patches. And, you know, we've been criticized, and understandably so, for the various patches over the year, years. I can tell you what our motive was. Our motive was to try to save as much public investment as possible for education, for health care, for the needy. And so, given the fact that we had a governor, Governor Schwarzenegger, who really didn't present this sort of comprehensive approach that included restructuring and reform. Our work, desperate work really over the past two years with these gargantuan deficits, was to save as much as we could. Well, the federal funds have run out. The temporary taxes are ending. Uh, there are no more patches. And I think that this is a realistic budget. We will review, may quibble with uh, some of the specifics, but the fact that he has essentially been fair in 
in asking for sacrifices across the board, including with some of the corporate tax breaks, I think is a, is a positive step and a positive sign. So sorry. Do you there's parity for child tax that you're proposing now? I'm sorry? Do you consider there's parity for child tax that you're proposing now? Because in the past we saw those cuts very bad. I, I hate these cuts. So are you going to I, 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 I hate these cuts, but that is a different question from whether or not it is the responsible thing and in the best interests of California and in the best interests of some of these programs to make the hard decisions that have to be made as fairly as possible to put this fiscal crisis behind us. Look at, I, I note among the list of cuts is $800 million from the initiative that I worked my heart out to pass. Prop 63, the Mental Health Services Act. And while I'm not ready to uh, endorse any particular cut, I'm also very clear that I can't in good conscience reject any proposal out of hand because of the situation we find ourselves in and the recognition that this state will be better off when we put this crisis behind us and can begin rebuilding. And that's where I'm at. Well, I, I would assume that they have, you know, so, some of a similar reaction to what I just said on the cut side. I hate the cuts, but I'm not going to reject uh, the, the cuts for the reasons that I stated. Look, I, I, I think this is an appropriate time, given this question, for me to say that the old way of negotiating California's budgets should be over here, too. You know the way that it has worked. Budget comes out, Democrats trying to maintain as much as possible, wanting some revenue, the Republicans putting together a long laundry list of what it would take in order to put up two or three votes, and then maybe they do and maybe they don't. Those days ought to be over. They ought to be over because what Governor Brown has put forward is the essence of shared sacrifice across the board. He's not trying to hide behind any patches to avoid these difficult, difficult, painful cuts. And I think that uh, as he called for loyalty, loyalty to the greater good in the California last week in his inaugural address, now is the time that both parties get out of their corners, come to the middle, and work together to put this fiscal crisis behind us. Because he said it, and you all know it, and they know it. $12 billion is an unprecedented, unprecedented level of cuts. If the taxes, existing taxes, are not extended, then double that. And no one will stand for doubling that. They won't stand for doubling that in their districts. So let's get real together. No doubt there's going to be huge resistance on our side to the level of cutting. But the times and our duty demands that we no longer allow this fiscal crisis to linger here in California. Well, if Governor Schwarzenegger, and again, you know, don't, don't, we look forward, not the past, and as I've said in all the interviews I've done about the governor, Governor Schwarzenegger, I thought he did a lot of fine things. So, but when it came to the fiscal piece, I don't think, I know he never presented uh, a comprehensive plan similar to this. And he certainly did not uh, propose the sorts of restructuring and reform that, again, I know I've been talking about and urging for some time that now is a centerpiece of Governor Brown's budget. Look, this is not, the restructuring piece, let's be clear, is not just sort of a sidelight to the, 
to the budget, it's, it's a fundamental part of solving California's problems. We raise the money and pass over 70% of it on to other areas of government. If you provide the service, you ought to have the money. If you don't provide the service, get out of the way. Now, there's going to be a lot of detail uh, in, <laughs> in, in between those two statements. But that's really what needs to be fixed. We can talk about rainy day funds all day, and that's important. We can talk about other reforms. Bringing together resources and responsibility in a clear way so that the people know who's providing the service and who's raising the money, that's what is essential to fixing California's governance, and he is proposing it in a very bold way. Well, it is a huge, it, it's a huge risk. And yet, this governor, who we, we, we aim to support, we'll, do, we'll reserve our right to disagree on plenty, believe me. But in these early months, as we're dealing with this fiscal crisis that w we support, he ran very clearly in saying that the only tax increases he would support would be tax increases that go to the ballot. And frankly, if Republicans are concerned that uh, somehow the tax increases will pass, but the cuts won't be made. I'm telling you here today, without endorsing this specific list of cuts, because we'll reserve our right to try to make this better, uh, as best we can to protect the needy, that we will not shy away on the Democratic side from doing what has to be done to put this fiscal crisis behind us. That's more important. Uh, than about anything else because we can't rebuild. We can't create a green economy. We can't, every, the budget crisis has a corrosive impact on everything else that we try to do. Now we've managed and triaged and, and but now we have a governor who has the political capital early in his administration. He understands the, the complexity of the problem and and we have a shot now to put this behind us, and we need to do it. And it is a, and it is a risk. And I think, uh, you know, in part, without holding a gun, as he said uh, today, um, I think part of the campaign will be to educate people about the difference between bad cuts, which are, which are what he proposed, and catastrophic cuts if the revenue tax extension doesn't pass and we have to double what he is proposing. Well, I, I'm, I'll, I'll wait to hear from my good friend Senator Dutton in a few minutes in terms of what the level of resistance is. Look, in my caucus, there are going to be a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, a lot of suggestions about how to make the cuts in a less harmful way. We'll consider all that. We'll work to do that in a very compressed time frame. But in terms of the levels uh, of cuts that he has put forward, uh, I'm confident that uh, we will step up because that's our job. Yeah, the, um, Tim yeah. said that he wants you know, to get Republican support, the bipartisan package for, for voters. Yeah. I, I agree with him that this, our chance of succeeding at the ballot number one, I think, um, depends in part on coming together as Democrats and Republicans. So I think it's very, very important that we do this on a two-thirds basis. You know, and we have to see what their reaction is. You know, uh, at the same time, if, you know, if we don't have partners, which I'm not assuming, then we'll then we'll look at uh, any and every way we, we have at our disposal to help save California. Darryl, could you, could you, could you, yes, Constitution. Darryl, could you just talk about, since you've been through, and you can look that way, right? okay. when you've been through this before in 2009 with a special election on the budget, um, you know, the voters have to understand what's different. And, and so in your mind, what would you tell people is different now? Is it that uh, um, the 
package is better, that one was poorly crafted, I know you were here, or, um, or, or, um, or is the situation more dire? They're going to ask, what's different? No, it's, good. it's a great and appropriate question. Look at um, the 2009 package, which I was part of, obviously was flawed. It was flawed because, uh, one, there were far too many ballot measures uh, for, the, for the people to consider. Number two, fe uh, February and May of 2009 was really at the very height and the intensity of the economic crisis. Um, but remember that we also were able to get the first temporary tax increase in California in 20 years in 2009. And in order to get that, we had to negotiate to get six Republican votes. Two leaders ended up losing their leadership positions. It was a, you know, it, it was a historic time, and we kept the state alive. We were on the verge of an economic collapse, and I take some pride in that. This is different, I think, because while this recession continues, there's some signs uh, that things are uh, about to improve. Number two, I think that uh, we have a new governor, and I think the people expect this new governor to, again, put this crisis behind the people of California sooner rather than later. And I think that this framework is much better than the, Feb than the February 2009 framework because it contains essential reform, which is bringing these services, many of these services, closer to the people. Can I go back to your previous question? Yeah, Dan. You can pass a new budget with 10 days notice by the prosecutor. Correct. Have you sought any legal opinion as to whether you can place these measures on the ballot, uh, tax measures on the ballot, in the form of amendments to pre existing statutory initiatives or simple majority votes? Is that your question? I think I'm going to invoke the attorney client privilege here. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, I, I'm not going to talk about our you know, potential legal strategies, but of course we're going to be prepared for anything. But we don't approach it in that way. We, we approach this, um, you know, with the full expectation that the negotiation itself is going to be different than in prior years. This isn't your average budget where they put together their list and we try to minimize the cuts. He put forward $12 billion worth of expenditure reductions. That's that's a list uh, that is long enough when it comes to uh, one side of the aisle, the majority party, the majority party uh, uh, sa sacrificing and the people that we all represent. A and remember, the $12 billion of expenditure reductions is in exchange for the privilege of asking the people to decide whether or not they want these taxes extended for five years. So it is very different. Uh, and I would hope that our colleagues who love and care about California every bit as much as <laughs> we do on the Democratic side uh, understand that this needs to be approached differently. I don't like any of this, but I think that the framework is, is a sound one. And, and I think we need to work within it. How heavy of a vote will it be on, the, or, or an issue is it going to be on the result? I mean, that clearly, you're going to have every city council member, mm -hmm. mayor, and everybody's district uh, Having never had a disagreement with the League of Cities, I, um, I'm not sure I can answer that, but um, I think it's going to be tough. But you know what? Let, let's talk about re what redevelopment is. Redevelopment, first of all, in many instances, is very worthy, and it does a lot of good work. Redevelopment's not all bad. We know there are some areas where uh, it has been abused, but it's not about whether it's a good thing or a, or, or a not so good thing. It's about making sure that everything competes for the limited dollar. 
Because what redevelopment really is, is a, another pass-through by the state to local economic development at the expense of cities, counties, and schools. So let's stack up that money. Let's stack up the $2 billion and compare it to another billion dollars of cuts to assistance to work or child welfare or education. And let's have that debate. I'll tell you one thing that I, you know, and you've heard me reject out of hand, is this notion of us versus them. And I know that's the way it will be portrayed, but Kevin Johnson is the mayor of Sacramento. And our constituents are the same. They care about police and fire services and redevelopment, but those same people are sending their kids to the public schools and to the community colleges, and they care about the state highways. And, <clears throat> and the idea that the state is doing X, Y, Z to the cities or to redevelopment agencies or some quote in the paper today about why do we rob banks because they're there that, I, that uh, we saw on the B, just in my view has no place in this debate. You're a ca we're all Californians. We're all part of a broken system, and we need to figure out what our priorities are. And redevelopment should be on that list in terms of assessing priorities. No. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. I, I I know that I'm you know meeting regularly with Senator Dutton and uh, and and you know continuing to work as we always had to have a good working cooperative relationship with the Republicans. And I have to be confident that in the end they will step up and uh, and do what's right for the people of California. Um, it's a new day, and here's an opportunity. Look, it's in their interest as well as representatives and their constituents' interest to put the fiscal crisis behind us as well, rather than deal with this every single year in ways that, um, in, in ways that people obviously have lost confidence in our ability to, to do so much. And the irony is, is that every year this legislature and go former governor um, produce a lot of important work, it gets lost because this behemoth continues to uh, be right in front of us. Senator, sorry, I can't see you. Okay. It's already um, on a downstairs said that she believes that they can fast process the green money without going to the ballot. Um, do you believe that's the case? And do you agree with that kind of solution? Uh, well, I don't know about the legal issue. That has to be looked at. but. Same answer that I gave in 2009. When I heard about this proposal, it kind of hit me in the gut. Um, not only because I worked so hard on it, but because I know that there are 14,000 people living with mental illness now getting comprehensive tr care that were not getting it before. At the same time, I cannot in good conscience reject that cut out of hand. Because that means another $800 million then that, it, that has to be looked at in child welfare or education or any of these other areas. If there's a way to improve upon that proposal to, you know, again, to make it less impactful to Mental Health Services Act, then of course we will try to do that. But I'm, I'm not going to sit here day one and say, don't touch what is most important to me. I don't think that would be a, a very good example. Well, I don't know where you go. Um, they say that they love public education. And when you look at the safety net, a billion five, half of the CalWORKs program, 13% reduc you know, grant reduction. Uh, when you look at uh, developmental services, uh, what, 700 million, Craig? 700, seven, 750 million dollars? I mean, where? 12 it itself is hard to swallow, hard to swallow. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>